Science fiction, the final frontier. These are the stories of Vintage SF. It's five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Well, maybe a few. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. One year ago, I started this channel with a parody of an episode of The Twilight Zone. Time enough at last. I have time. Time enough at last. And today, I'm continuing my mission. I've had a lot of fun sharing my growing collection with you and reviewing or at least chatting about books. I finished off one major project, reading the A Science Fiction Specials Series 1. I'm in the middle of continuing on to Series 2 and Series 3. When beginning this channel, I had two months before that I had been collecting and reading some books. So now I'm 14 months in on reading science fiction. I'm averaging about two to three books a week. Remember, a lot of these books are around 200 pages or just less. In this video, I'll tell you the 10 best books that I read this last year. I'll also give you 10 runner-ups. Then I want to tell you a little bit about my plans and also thank some people. So let's get started. When deciding what my best reads of the last 14 months were, I looked at those books that I had rated between 8 to 10. 9 and 10 on my scale were books that I wanted to reread, and I was pretty sure that my best books would be in that category but I want to look at eight just in case there was something I would move up. I do plan to do a video called Upon Further Review, where I'll talk about some books in this last year, which have either moved up or down on this scale. Let's start with my 10 runner-ups. I'm gonna do them in alphabetical order of last name of the author. The Revolving Boy by Gertrude Friedberg. This was one of the novels that I read in the A Science Fiction Specials. I would not have read this novel otherwise. In fact, I think it's a one-hit wonder. It is the one and only novel by Gertrude Friedberg. Of course, she does have some short stories. This novel looks at a boy with some extraordinary spatial abilities. And these spatial abilities might be tuning him in to a message from outer space. The next runner-up is a classic of SF literature. It really needs no introduction. A Canticle for Leibowitz by Walter M. Miller Jr. I've read this novel before, and this novel took on another level of meaning for me when I realized that Walter M. Miller Jr. had a war experience where he was in an airplane bombing an abbey, Monte Cassino, in Italy. Being a Catholic and bombing a monastery led to some of the prose that we find in A Canical for Leibowitz. My next runner-up was by another new author to me, Alexei Panshin. It was called Rite of Passage. It won the Nebula Award. It is a coming-of-age story for a girl upon a generation ship, but this generation ship is now a home and it travels between the colonized worlds. My next runner-up is the most contemporary book on this list. Bewilderment by Richard Powers. This book is an homage and actually refers back to another book that's on our list. I'll get to that when we get to that book. The protagonists are a father and a son. The wife has passed away and it's left a hole in their lives. The son has some neurodivergent qualities and there's an experiment to see if they can line up his brain waves with the brain waves of a volunteer. But what if that volunteer is the brainwaves recorded of his dead mother? I think this is a modern hidden gem. A lot of people may not even think of it as science fiction, but it was very moving. A good story. Next, Inverted World by Christopher Priest. This has a fascinating concept. The world building is tremendous and throughout we're trying to just figure out what the rules of this world are. If you've never heard of Christopher Priest, 
I think his most famous work is The Prestige, and there was a movie by that name. We're halfway through the runner-ups now. This next one is a collection of stories by Bob Shaw called Cosmic Kaleidoscope. So many ideas and unique plot twists. This is a great collection of science fiction short stories. And speaking of Bob Shaw, there's a fix-up novel of short stories called Other Days, Other Eyes. It refers to the concept of slow glass, that which goes into the glass as light only comes out some time later, perhaps even years. Where can you take this concept? Bob Shaw is such a creative writer, and we look at the different outcomes from law enforcement to history, etc. There's one particularly poignant story in this collection, or actually I should say fix up. Another collection of short stories introduced me to a universe called the instrumentality of mankind. You will never be the same by Cordwainer Smith. Since reading this collection, I've collected all of Cordwainer Smith's work. You'll hear more about him in the future. Smith may be one of the most interesting authors that I've researched. I'll just tease that you can find out more about him in the video about this book. Another runner up is by one of my favorite authors, John Windham. Chalky. What if a boy has an imaginary friend, but that friend really isn't imaginary? A quiet yet disturbing story. And the last runner-up is another John Windham novel, The Day of the Triffids. Once again, this is a novel just like A Canicle for Leibwitz, which was formed by experiences in the Second World War. What if Europe couldn't recover from the devastation of the war? That's the kind of countryside that we see in The Day of the Triffids. Two seemingly unrelated events cause a catastrophe. People are blinded, and plants which eat flesh roam the countryside. This, again, is a classic of science fiction. All right, that's only our runners-up. Now we have the 10 best reads I had of the last 14 months. So here we go. My top 10 reads of the first year of Vintage SF. These are again in alphabetical order. Alfred Bester, The Stars, My Destination. There has never been such a frenetic writer as Alfred Bester in SF. We start off with a story of revenge and of the skill to jaunt, that's teleport yourself. And this skill takes the protagonist, Gully Foyle, to a whole nother level at the end of the novel. This one reads like an action movie from today. It's really surprising that this has never been adapted for the screen. Next, alphabetically, is a book that has been adapted for the screen a number of times, but the book, of course, is still the best. Pierre Boulle's Planet of the Apes. If you haven't read the book, you don't know the entire story. This one is one of those formative reads that I had as a teenager. Highly recommended. And the next one is also a very formative read from my teenage years. Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood's End. It is notable for having two big paradigm shifts in the story. Masterful. Our next book is arguably the best military SF book ever. Joe Haldeman's The Forever War. And it's not only military SF, it's also an anti-war book. It really is the experience of Joe Haldeman in the Vietnam War. You can find an excellent review for this novel at Grammaticus Books. Do you remember back when I was talking about that runner-up Bewilderment by Richard Powers? Well, the novel that it models itself after and it credits within the pages of the story is The Flowers for Algernon by Daniel Keyes. This award-winning novel is one of the most heartfelt SF stories you will ever read. Could you take somebody with a low IQ and give them a drug which would increase their intelligence. How far would that drug take them? And what would happen to the relationships that they had? This, again, is another classic of science fiction. Next, 
Two Novels by Ursula K. Le Guin. If you are watching my reviews of the A Science Fiction Special Series 1, the completion of it, then you'll know that A Wizard of Earthsea is the best fantasy novel on this list. It is a remarkable piece of work. In 200 pages, it builds a world and makes you care for its characters. Le Guin is a special writer, and that also includes the other novel in this list, The Left Hand of Darkness. It is a seminal work of science fiction, of literature. If you haven't read it, you really need to. She is one of these rare novelists who can write both fantasy and science fiction. Many of her science fiction stories take place within a universe that we call the Hainish universe. In this universe, over thousands and thousands of years, Earth has populated other planets, but they've lost track of those planets. Now they've come together again in a collection of worlds, and they keep finding interesting new planets where humanity has evolved in ways that are unexpected. Le Guin is a marvelous author. Next, this author was in my runner-ups and is in this top 10. Bob Shaw, The Palace of Eternity. This story has Bob Shaw's usual inventive ideas and creative plotting. It actually reads like something that either A.E. Van Vogt or perhaps even Bester wrote. It is one of the gems of the A Science Fiction specials. And now for one of the longest novels that I've read this year. Another contemporary work, Seven Eves by Neil Stevenson. What if something, perhaps a micro black hole, punctured through the moon? The fragments of the moon would start to rain down on Earth in a few years. Could we save our species? This is hard science fiction at its best. Two-thirds of the novel is that survival story, and then the last third jumps forward thousands of years, so we get an epilogue that's about a third of the novel. In fact, it's really another new story. I thoroughly enjoyed this novel. It's a great read. And the last one in my top 10 reads is by an author who really only wrote one science fiction novel. George R. Stewart, Earth Abides. A pandemic wipes out 99.9% .9 of the human population. This book was written in 1949, but in many ways it feels contemporary. What would happen to the few humans that survived? It is a fascinating look at survival and of generations. It is a deeply moving novel, one that I think many have never heard of before. So there you go. 20 books, 10 runners up, and 10 best reads of my first year of Vintage SF. I plan to return to this format in a year's time for year two of Vintage SF. Slowly, we'll build a library of recommendations. So what are my plans for year two of Vintage SF? Well, I just want to keep continuing on with the progress that I've made in year one. I want to continue on with the A Science Fiction Specials. I also want to continue my partnership with Ira and Matt reading the best of from the Ballantine Classic Library of Science Fiction. Ira's channel is SF Words of Wonder and Matt's channel is Science Fiction Reads. I also have certain authors that I like to target and build their library. I'm going to continue to read books by John Windham. I want to start reading books by A.E. Van Vogt. And I also want to take a look at a new author to me, Zena Henderson. So I have some focus, but I also have some room to improvise on my TBR. I want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. I'm gratified by the response that I've received in subscriptions and also with all the comments that I receive. So many of you have taught me things about SF. I enjoy the comment sections of these videos, the conversation, and the observations. Thank you for being along this journey with me. And I also want to thank some of my fellow booktubers. I started this channel after watching two grumpy old men on the Outlaw Bookseller channel. Stephen E. Andrews has been an inspiration and a friend. Thank you, Stephen. 
And I also fell into communication with one of the most amazing collectors out there, Jules Burt. Thank you for your time and encouragement, Jules. I've mentioned Ira and Matt. I really enjoy doing videos with these guys. Thank you for partnering with me on some videos. I also want to recommend my twin of sorts. We started our channels almost to the day. That's John of Sci-Fi Scavenger. Congratulations, John, on the one year anniversary for your channel. There are so many other channels I watch. I thank you all you booktubers for ideas and encouragement. There's too many to name, but I'll try right here. So there you have it. One year of Vintage SF. Until next time, boldly go.